Praise God. How you guys doing? Amen. It's Adam with Team Jesus Preachers here today. Uh, hope you guys are well. <clears throat> I'm doing great. I don't know if I could do any better. Could we do any better? Amen. Uh, God is really pouring out. Um, one sec, folks. I want to do a sound check here. Okay. Check my team. Check, check, check. Check, check your sound check. Check here. Appreciate your patience. You're well. I'm trying to get this mic working. It's been having problems. There we go. Success. Okay, I think we got it. There we go. Success. It's working now. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I'm so glad to be here uh, with you guys here again. Um, to share a word from the word of God. Amen. Um, you know, first thing I want to share a hey, blessings, blessings, uh, angel from Puerto Rico. God bless you. Bless you, Irving, Mr. Nobody. God bless you. God bless you. <clears throat> Stormy X gaming. Bless you guys today. Uh, you know, I got a, what I believe is a very important word. I believe every word that I share is important, but some are more important than others. Amen. You know, um, Get that chip off your shoulder, you know, uh, and uh, I'm going to dive into this in a minute. Before I do that, I just want to tell you guys, you know, because uh, one thing that I think is uh, it's good uh, 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 to share our lives with each other, right? Um, you know, we have social media. We've got these uh, mediums and platforms that God's given us to encourage one another um, in, in, in our faith and our most holy faith. Love that verse in Jude talks about building yourselves up on your most holy faith, you know, and I want to build you up. I want to testify to you of, of what God is doing in my life. Give glory to God and, and, and you know, and um, help encourage you to, to keep going. You know, before I get into this word that I want to share today, you know, um, <clears throat> God has just been, he's been really, um, you know, pouring out. He's really been just, just humbling me with his goodness. Um, you know, if you, if you kind of look at my truck right now, it's like a bomb went off in here. looks like, uh, you know, looks like a natural disaster here in my truck. And there's a reason for that. <clears throat> my garage, my truck, my, my, um, right now I, God has been pouring out work into my life. Um, you know, as soon as I got back, we were on vacation this week. Um, Ryan and I, we finally got away. We, we actually had to delay our vacation that we normally take a vacation one, one a year, just me and her. And we had to delay it because of our conference and, and work and stuff. And finally got a chance to get away. And, and as soon as I got back, you know, it was funny because we've been praying, Rain and I, um, pretty much daily that God would, would give us work. You know, would, I work for myself, Raina, you know, my wife, she works for me now. She is my helper when I need help. And so we pray together that God would give me work, you know, because I'm the sole provider now. It's a new season for us. You know, in the past, we've um, we've had typically two incomes, and we've stepped out in faith to try this uh, uh, you know this new dynamic out where it's it's just me um, working primarily. It's been a lot of uh, uh, pressure on me, you know, in a good way. I'm not complaining or anything about this. It's just you know I've had to shift gears. I've had to make adjustments. Now realizing that this other income that usually had come in through through my wife wasn't there, you know, and I just want to testify to the power of prayer here because as we're praying, we're not praying, you know, God, give us a handout. We're not praying, God, just send a check in the mail here just to pay off our house and pay off our, our debts. And, you know, which if God were to do that, amen. I mean, you know, I mean, but what's my prayer really? What, what is, what do I really want from the Lord? 
well, what I want is work. What I want is, you know, God to, to, to give me uh, good paying jobs, something that I can do and use my skill set and, and, and work those extra hours. It's Saturday. I got to go to work today. And, and again, I'm not complaining. I'm actually rejoicing. I'm testifying to you that God has poured out work. Um, you know, as soon as we got back, or actually before we even left the cruise uh, that we went on together, um, you know, I got a, a phone call uh, or a text from a uh, one of the clients I work for, and they they said that this job that I was hoping to get um, has has come through, you know, and it was unexpected actually, because they they actually gave the job to a different contractor, and and something happened with the guy, he just couldn't finish it, and they ended up giving it over to me, and you know, and I had to come back from my cruise and go right to work, and you know, but man, I tell you, I was jumping jumping out of my seat to do that, I was jumping for joy, you know, and. So I'm in a time now where the where the trough is not clean, you know, it's it's all messed up here. It just looks like a bomb went off of my truck, and you know, but 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 you know, this is um, this this ties into what I want to talk about um, today. You know, I want to talk about what can happen when we get a chip on our shoulder, when 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 things like work, things like ministry, things like our relational issues can can weigh on us. Any of you know what I'm talking about with this? How this can happen? You know, things that, that should be a, a joy, you know, to have to go through the rigors of work and eventually I'm going to have to clean this truck out. Eventually I'm going to have to clean my garage and stuff and I'm going to have to get these jobs done. And, you know, it's funny because, um, you, you know, yesterday, um, you know, I get back on Thursday, I get this screen job that I was telling you about that, that broke at, at my uh, community I work at. And, you know, and yet, and Thursday went great. You know, everything went great. I, I went on, I went to the job and made a bunch of progress on the job. Well, yesterday, you know, I ran around and basically wasted the entire day looking for this one piece of uh, vinyl here. I got the piece of vinyl right here, you know, and, and this is like a special color. If you notice, here's the one color. They're a little bit different shade. This one is the one that they stopped. This one is like a gray. This one's a brown. So I'm like running around. I spent the whole day looking for this stupid gray vinyl. I couldn't find it. <laughs> I was like, Driving all over Lee County, you know, for this stupid little, you know, $30 piece of vinyl, you know, wasted the whole day, but it wasn't a waste. It wasn't a waste. You know, we can get a chip on our shoulder um, about things that seem like a waste of time. Seems like, what's the point here? You know, every time I, I, I do this at work, you know, I run into a brick wall, run into a problem. Every time I try to make effort with this brother in Christ, I run into a problem. You know, and we can get this chip on our shoulder. We can get this burden that, that starts weighing us down, you know. And, you know, it was funny because yesterday when I saw how the day was going and, you know, um, many of you who, 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 who have maybe your own businesses or, or just in general, no matter, no matter if you work for someone else or you work for yourself, you know, you'll have these days that it just seems like, you know, you just can't get anything done. You know, you just seem like, it just seems like there's no progress happening. You're like, man, you know, what is this all about, Lord? I mean, I just spent, you know, all day driving to look for this piece of vinyl. I couldn't find it. I mean, what's the point of all that? But you see, I think the whole point of these situations that God, I believe, has ordained for us to go through no matter if there's a mountaintop experience or a valley experience, no matter if there's a day where it seems like everything's just going so smooth and so perfect or days like yesterday for me where I just, I just got nothing done. I made no money. I lost money. You know, I, I spent, I spent all this gas, you know, and I got this gas guzzling truck that, you know, was just sucking up a bunch of gas driving around and made no money on the job, you know, but, but you know what, 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 what I, what I was able to accomplish in the spirit of God was, was that I, I, I was able to keep this chip off my shoulders. <laughs> because I'm telling you, no matter what we go through, no matter if things are going smooth or things are difficult, um, we can win. We can win this, 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 in this truth I'm talking about today. Because I'm telling you, if we allow these chips to get on our shoulder, um, y y you know, we lose. Many of you know what it's like um, <clears throat> when this happens. I'm going to give you this proverb here. Uh, to start because uh, I tell you, you know, there's been lots of times when, um, you know, I, I've had work. I've, I've, I've had, you know, um, more work than what I knew what to do with. 
um, you know, I've been bombarded. I'm talking about my, 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 my business here. I'm actually get, gonna get driving because I, I do have to get on my way to the job. But you know, there's been seasons of, of my, my life where you know, I've been busy um, with a lot of stuff and it can it'd be overwhelming to me. You, you know, almost like sometimes you can bite off more than what you, what you can chew in certain situations. And then all of a sudden you find yourself like under all this pressure you know, with, with work particularly, this can be difficult. You know, you know, I've been around customers that they are like uh, slave drivers, you know. I've been, been in situations where the jobs, you know, they seem like, man, they're more difficult than what, what I thought they were going to be. And, you know, and, 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 and the thing is, takes me, you know, it requires me, the job requires me to work, you know, like 12 hour days for like, you know, 14 days straight. You know, I've had these situations happen where this, this weight of, pressures of work have have hit me in the past and you know and I made the mistake um, in those those times in the past of, of letting it get to me of letting this chip get on my shoulder you know this chip on your shoulder for those of you who uh, maybe have never heard this phrase um, use it's actually a worldly phrase you know the biblical uh, 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 comparison or, or sim similar when you look at it scripturally what, what it is is it's a burden it's a burden, you, you know, that can get on you. Um, you know, it says, cast your burdens upon the Lord that, and he will sustain you, uh, Psalms 55 says. And so uh, this chip on your shoulder, you know, this worldly phrase, hey, you know, people will say this, you know, when somebody's got this like bad attitude, hey man, w w w why you got this chip on your shoulder? You know, why are you letting this thing get to you? You know, um, wh wh what's the problem? You know, and, and usually what the way it manifests when you have a burden that, that you're carrying, that you're letting weigh you down or, 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 or get to you is you end up in this, you end up in this place where you're real angry. You end up in this place where you're disgruntled. You end up in this place where, you, you, you know, you're lacking joy, you're lacking peace. You know, I'm going to tie some of these things in today because, uh, you know, I've had lots of chips on my shoulders, folks. I mean, I've let a lot of things weigh on me. Uh, look, ministry is laborious. Uh, work is laborious. Relational issues are laborious. Y you know, these labors, if, you're, if you don't know how to give them to the Lord, sometimes constantly, cast your cares upon the Lord, for He cares for you, right? First Peter 5 tells us. If you can't learn, if we can't learn how to do this, to keep these chips off of our shoulders, uh, we'll get weighed down. We'll get burnt out. We'll get, you know, so disgruntled and, and, and angry. And, and, and now we can't even enjoy the fact that God has given us these things to labor in. I mean, probably nothing, there's nothing probably worse than I've found um, in my life than, than when I have no work, you know. Going back to what I was sharing, you know, about some of these times when I've had, you know, jobs, you know, that are real difficult and, and they're, they're tough jobs. And, you, you know, they're, they're, they're jobs that have deadlines that seem like they're, they're they're uh, unreasonable and, and unmakeable, you know. And and all of a sudden here I am, and I'm in the I'm in the furnace, you know. I'm in the place where it's difficult, and I don't know if I can do it, you know. I'm being I'm being squeezed, like I was sharing a minute ago on some of these jobs I've had in the past, and I've let it get to me. But you know, but I tell you, it's there's nothing worse, nothing worse than than when I have no work. Uh, uh, as as tough as it can be to have to you know work those twelve hour days and have to deal with maybe, you know, like I said, I'm tying in other things than just work into this message where you can get a chip on your shoulder. Just anything that's laborious can, can, can weigh you down, you know, um, but even relational issues, you know what I mean? When God says, Hey, I need you to go to that brother and make it right. I need you to, to, to go reconcile with your brother. Like when, remember what Jesus said, when you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that your brother has uh, something against you, he says, leave your gift at the altar, go be reconciled to your brother. You know, that takes effort. It's, it's, it's you know, because the flesh being lazy, being, being, being selfish says, well, let the other brother come and reconcile with me. He's the one who offended me or he's the one offended at me, right? But God says, no, 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 no. You gotta be the one who is spiritual. Go restore that brother in the spirit of meekness, right? As the word of God says in Galatians 6. So, you know, there's labor involved right all things are full of labor but you know that can that can bring a chip on your shoulder you know you can be like the guy you know that um <laughs> I'm trying to think of the, in, the, in the scriptures you see this in the scriptures a lot where 
you know, God would, would put somebody up to something and, and, and they're just like complaining the whole time, <clears throat> you know? Oh, like Jonah. Jonah's a good example of this. Remember when Jonah, uh, when God sent Jonah to uh, the Ninevites uh, uh, to preach to them that he had a 40 days, God was going to destroy uh, Nineveh. But, but Jonah said that he, 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 he didn't want to do it and actually fled from the face of the Lord, it says. He, he got on the, the boat and tried to go to Tarshish. We know what happened after that, right? Man, things went from bad to worse here with Jonah. I mean, Jonah had a chip on his shoulder. Jonah did not want to preach to the Ninevites. Now, we, find out, we found out later when you read the book of Jonah why Jonah fled from the face of the Lord. He fled from the call of God to go and preach to the Ninevites. We found out later in the, in the book. The reason why, Jonah said, is because he knew that God was merciful <laughs> and that God was, was actually going to, uh, he had sensed that God was going to relent from bringing the disaster upon the Ninevites. And, and Jonah, you know, after he um, finally went to Nineveh, uh, after God commissioned him to go the second time, after he ended up in the belly of the great fish, the storm on the water and all that happened, and uh, the mariners threw him over into the sea, the, the, the great fish swallowed him, and all of that happened. The fish vomits him up, and now God, you know, commissions him again. You know, Jonah, I'm sending you to the Ninevites, you know, to preach my word, right? So Jonah finally goes, Jonah's got this chip on his shoulder. He, he does not want God to give mercy to the Ninevites, right? It's what we read. And um, so Jonah, after he finally preaches the word of the Lord to the Ninevites, he, it says he sits outside of the city of Nineveh and he waits for God to bring disaster upon the Ninevites. <laughs> but God doesn't bring it. God does not bring the disaster that Jonah was hoping for upon the Ninevites. And uh, we know what happens, right? It says that this uh, fig tree grew up. I think it was a fig tree. Uh, and Jonah was under the uh, uh, shade of the fig tree. It was really hot out. And Jonah was so thankful for this fig tree that grew up and, and was shading him from, from getting burned by the sun, you know. And so what's happened is that the God provides, it says, this, this worm to, uh, to eat the, the, the fig tree, right? It eats the fig tree. The fig tree dies. And now here's Jonah being scorched by the sun, you know, and so he's got this chip on his shoulder, Jonah. You know, he does not want God to, get, to give mercy to the Ninevites. He realizes there's a problem here. There's a problem here, man. The disaster that, that he thought that God was going to bring upon the Ninevites is not coming, and Jonah's mad about it. Oh, so now God's, you know, teaching Jonah a lesson through this fig, this, this fig tree or whatever it was that was shading Jonah now is gone. Jonah's, his, now this chip that is on Jonah's shoulder is, 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 is even worse. You know, you guys ever had this happen to you? You know, a situation that, that, that actually wasn't even that bad. You, you know, like, it's not that bad, Jonah. Okay, God wants to give mercy to the Ninevites. I mean, what's the big deal here, Jonah? I mean, didn't God give mercy to you in your life? You know, do you guys see the correlation with this of how we can get these chips on our shoulder, our shoulders? You know, we read about this in the Proverbs a lot. You know, it says, it says, it says he was glad at calamity. It, it says, what it says, what's it say there? Uh, I forget the pro how it, says, it phrases it. Something like, you know, he was glad at calamity sins or something. And, you know, don't rejoice when your enemy falls in these things. Or, and you don't hope for that even. You don't want to hope for, <clears throat> you know, calamity and judgment to come upon even your enemies. Because, you know, you could be the enemy. You know, I mean... You could, have, you could have God turn the tables on you, and now all of a sudden you sin, and you need mercy and grace. And, you know, we, we see this in the parables a lot. You know, the guy who got forgiven all the debt, you know, the 10,000 talents of debt, and the master forgave him. But then he went out and choked the guy who owed him, you know, 100 denarii. And, 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 and we saw what happened in the end, right? Well, so Jonah is, is falling into this trap. He's falling into this trap, you know, not wanting to mer a mercy for the Ninevites. And so uh, this chip is on his shoulder, right? And so all of a sudden now it gets worse, though, for Jonah. When this fig tree, back to this account of Jonah, the fig tree. Um, so the tree is gone that is shading Jonah. Jonah is being scorched by the sun. And then it says that Jonah wished to die, is what it says. I mean, have any of you guys ever had this happen? With these burdens, these chips, these weights, that, that really we, we bring upon ourselves. Really, if we're honest... With, with ourselves, it ain't that bad, man. Look, look, Jesus said, if, if it, or not, not Jesus, um, but, but Jeremiah, there's a scripture in Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, look, if, if, if you've, if you've, uh, if the, what do you say? It says, if, it says if the, 
how does he phrase it? He says something like, if you've uh, walked with, those who have walked with you have wearied you, how will you contend with the horses? I'm butchering the scripture here. Let me see if I can uh, just pull it up here because I'm forgetting the first part. Uh, it's in Jeremiah. I know that. Let me just find it here. Hallelujah. But it, it, it's a perfect scripture. Um, footmen. If the footmen have wearied you, that's what it is. He says, if, if, you've, if you've walked with the footmen and, and they've wearied you, we find it. Uh, here it is. Praise the Lord for these Bible apps. Amen. We can find a scripture on, the, on, a, on, a, on a drop of a hat here. So this is Jeremiah 12, verse 5. Prophet Jeremiah says, If you have run with the footmen and they have wearied you, there's that chip on our shoulder, right? There's where that chip uh, comes. You know, they're, we're getting wearied, you know. Uh, don't, be, don't become wearied in well-doing, it says. You know, you'll reap in due season if you faint not. But Jeremiah says, If you've run with the footmen and they have wearied you, then how can you contend with horses? Um, if in the land of peace in which you trusted they wearied you, then how will you do in the footplain of the Jordan? You know, what a great verse for what I'm talking about today. Look, if, if things are actually not that bad right now in, in our lives, you know, we've got gas at the gas stations, we got food in the grocery stores. Look, even if we, let's just say, lost our jobs, um, uh, something bad happened uh, to us, um, lost our jobs, um, ended up homeless. You, you know, we, there's still soup kitchens, you know, in, in our communities. There's still people who would give food to us if we if we had to beg. Most of us are not going through that. I dare say probably none of you are going to that because you're going through that because you probably wouldn't have a inter the internet. You wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't have to, uh, the, the finances to be able to even pay your phone bill to be able to be on here right today. <laughs> So probably none of us are going through a situation like that where it's to the point where we, we don't have no food. Um, so for us, you know, we're at a time now of, of abundance. We're at a time now where there's food, there's, there's commodities around the corner, there's means for us to get our needs met. So Jeremiah, you know, says here under the uh, uh, inspiration of the Holy Spirit, look, if things really aren't that bad, if you're running with the footman and you're being wearied, if you got a chip on your shoulder, well, how are you going to do if, if you really had a, a difficult time come upon you? If you really had a tribulation, a time of trial and trouble hits you, man, I tell you, we wouldn't do very well, is what I hear in, in, in this uh, word here from Jeremiah. And so this is what fell upon Jonah. It, it, back to the account of Jonah here that I was, I was just um, recounting to you. So Jonah, you know, things aren't that bad for Jonah. You know, okay, Jonah. God wants to give mercy to the Ninevites. It's not the end of the world here, right? So Jonah, you know, goes outside the city. He's got this chip on his shoulder. Uh, he's now being scorched. And, and, and this is what it says. It says he wanted to die. He wanted to die, man. I mean, it's like Jonah was like, uh, it's almost like he was suicidal is what it sounds like. He was depressed. He was, uh, he had a chip on his shoulder and now he wanted to die. But God, you know, uh, uh, didn't grant, you know, Jonah to die. God's, God gave Jonah a word, you know. And the word was, Jonah, you know, um, this, this fig tree that I made grow up in, in one day or, or whatever it was and cause the, the, the canker worm to eat it, you, you know, you, you have mercy on this fig tree, Jonah, for which you didn't make it grow. I mean, you, you, you know, it's just, this fig tree grew on its own. You, you, didn't, you didn't create this fig tree. You know, it's, it's not your fig tree. It's my fig tree, you know, God's basically saying. And, 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 and but yet when it perished, you know, you had mercy on it. You, you, you wish the fig tree was still alive here to, 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 to shade you, you know. But what about these, uh, 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 I think it was like 100 and, uh, what's it say, what did he say? I forget how he said, I think it's at 100, 100,000 people or something. There was, I think he numbered how many people were in Nineveh. He says, what about all these people that are in Nineveh? You know, and all the cattle and livestock, you, you know. I mean, what about these people, man, which are much more valuable than this stupid fig tree, Jonah? I mean, I mean, should not I have I spared these people? Why do you got this chip on your shoulder about me sparing Nineveh? You know, do you, you guys see what can happen when we get this attitude? You know, and, 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 you know, the worst part about these chips on our shoulder when we become like an angry man, you know, 
we, we become we become like Mr. You know, you know, snarl. We're like snarling. We're like, you know, I we just you know, you can you can sense it. I I know even my wife. You know, even when I just get the least bit of this chip on my shoulder, and you know, I'll come home from work and I'll start getting short with her. You know, and and for me, you know, I, I feel like it, you know, I'm like, I because we try to cover it. We try to act like nobody knows we got a chip on our shoulder. But, but, you know, it, we can only cover it so long, right? We can only um, hide it so long before God starts to, you know, induce us to let out that, that anger, that wrath, that, ah, you know, you just, you just, you know, an outburst of wrath. It, it usually comes out on somebody close to you first, you know, on your spouse, your, your, your friends that are closest to you. Um, you know, if you do ministry, you'll see it come out there. You know, you'll be out street preaching and every person, that, it seems like every person that comes by to you, you get short with. You can't listen to them. You don't want to listen to them. You don't want to reason with them. You don't want to bear long with them. You know, if, if, if your, your friend comes to you and asks you to go one mile, you, you don't even want to go one mile, let alone two, because you got a chip on your shoulder. <laughs> you know, that happened to me the other day when I came home from work. I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder and, and you know, and I started to get short with my wife and she's like, Adam. Adam, something's wrong here with you. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're not yourself. I'm like, really? What, what, what's the problem, honey? <laughs> I knew inside. I knew inside, you know. Um, yeah, sometimes we need to just, just ask, ask our close, you know, we just humble ourselves when, that, when this happens. When, when this happens, you know, when, when, when your wife or friend, you know, notices it, just humble yourself, right? Hey, babe, will you just pray for me? You know, I'm at a rough day at work. I'm letting it get to me or... I got these issues, you know, that, that I'm working through with the Lord here. And, you, you know, I'm a little disgruntled. I'm a little bit like Jonah. You know, I don't want to go to Nineveh. I don't want to, I don't want to preach to these people here, man. And, and it was funny because that day, part of the reason why I had a chip on my shoulder, this is a really good testimony here I'll share with you, because we've been going through this situation in, in, in the city of Fort Myers. city of Fort Myers here, you know, they just changed their, their noise ordinance um, now where uh, it makes it almost nearly impossible for us to use uh, amplification. We've had a good year, you know, in, in, in Fort Myers, they've been letting us use our speakers basically at whatever volume we want. Um, but now they, the city council ganged up against us and changed the ordinance. So now it's like, man, you, you, they made it so that if, you, if, if they can hear you, if anybody can hear you uh, uh, past 25 feet, they can they can shut you down, which twenty five feet is nothing, you know. So th this whole thing just just happened recently here uh, 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 in in Fort Myers. So you know here it is, you know. Um, there's there's these events that go on uh, uh, once every two weeks. Maybe you guys have seen. We were down there all the time. The art walk is one of them, and, and the music walk is is the other one. So last Friday was the art walk, um, Kevin. And, and all the brothers wanted to go down to preach it. And I'm like, you know, I don't want to go down there anymore. You know, how we get, you know, they, they shut us down. And, you know, we got to preach in this loud environment with our voices. And I had this chip on my shoulder. So the reason why I got a little snappy with my wife that day, because it was Friday. I got home from work, you know, and uh, I didn't want to go preach down there. I don't want to just go and, and be humble and just, because I, you know, imagine in my mind, this was already happening too, that the people were like mocking uh, uh, I've been mocking us. Hey guys, where's your speaker at? <laughs> I can't use your speaker. You know, so you don't know, imagine my mind, you'll be going down there in some center that has, has been, you know, combative with me already up to this point, you know, coming to mocking me. You know, I'm like, just don't even want to go and preach to these people, you know. Folks, this is how we get a chip on our shoulder. These are the type of things that, that, that can happen to us that can cause us to get, get disgruntled and, and and start to avoid, you know, maybe a difficult situation. Hey, it's not pleasant to have to be in a situation where, where you're defeated in some way, where, where now you have to just, you know, hey, if they want to, you know, come and mock you to your face and laugh at you, well, just talk to them, you know, just be like, you know, hey, man, it's all good. I, hey, if God doesn't want me to preach out here, if it's just too loud and I can't use my voice, I'll just preach to you. I'll just talk to you, buddy. Hey, tell me about your life. <laughs> You just you just do what you can, you know, and you go with the flow uh, of what God is is doing, and that's one of the ways I found where where that chip on our shoulder, you, you know, how we cast that burden on the Lord. We just we don't have to always have it our way. We don't have to have things go just the way we want them to always go. 
And, and you know, it was neat because when we went out there on Friday, we actually got to use the speaker. Um, you know, we, we started off on a really low volume and, uh, and, and we were able to get it up um, high enough to where we could be heard. And I know we, we, were, we were going past 25 feet, like I said. I mean, uh, shoot, even on the lowest volume, um, you can be heard past 25 feet on any speaker. So we were, we were projecting enough to where it was going probably 100 feet. And the cops let us use the speaker. You know, so here I am, you know, get, I got a chip on my shoulder for no, really no reason. Man. And then I was able to preach with my voice to the restaurants, you know, and, and, and um, God strengthened my voice that night. So there was really no reason for hey guys, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, glory to God, you know, Mr. Nobody. I, uh, you know, and it's neat because, man, once, once I got out there and I was preaching, I saw what God was doing. He was giving us favor with the police and 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 allowing us to to to, be, to to you know have success when we thought that maybe it wasn't going to go so good. You know, it was like God really poured out um, His goodness uh, into my soul, and, and I, I had to repent. You know, I had to uh, sit before the Lord and repent. Why did I have that chip in my shoulder? Why did I let that get to me? You know, I want to get to the point where. Whenever I feel that that chip in my shoulder, that weight, that whatever it is that, that that I perceive in my flesh to be some burdensome thing, that's what that's what it is. You know what I mean? You get this idea in your mind, you know, something maybe even that in the past, you know, was enjoyable. You 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 you, you had that merry heart. You had that cheerfulness about it. But now um, it's not that way anymore. You know. Uh, maybe your job, for example, you used to love your job. You used to love your wife, you know, hanging out with your wife or doing this and that. But now because maybe something shifted, maybe you got like a new supervisor at your job or maybe like now I'm 44 years old. So sometimes, you know, you know, physical labor is not so pleasant, you know, when I got a hurt knee or something, you know, and I got to go to work, um, you know, something that in the past, you know, you might have, have found enjoyment in, but now that you're a little older, a little weaker, or, or maybe like the time, because the times are in now, people, uh, people, their love is growing cold. And, you know, uh, street evangelism can sometimes can, cannot be necessarily always so pleasant. But these type of things can be the, the reasons why we get a chip on our shoulder. Ministry, you, you, you know, can be laborious. It can be taxing on you if, if you don't have you know, a real close relationship with the Lord. If you're not really drawn near to the Lord to get to get that strength from Him, to get um, the, uh, one sec, folks. Okay, I just want to make sure we got uh, vocals here. You know, yeah, sometimes you can't even sleep, like like Christina was saying. Um, you know, these things can hit us. You know, I've, I've had uh, uh, things manifest. Uh, I try to be transparent with you guys because number one, so you can pray for me. Uh, we can pray for each other, but I want to be transparent about my, my hobby. Like I said, a chip on my shoulder about at times in my walk. And I've had, you know, uh, uh, pains in my stomach and pressures in my chest. And, you know, a lot of times I'm, I'm, I'm praying, I'm asking the Lord, I'm like, where's this coming from? Like, where's this anxiety and, and these, these chips on my shoulder coming from? And, you know, and the Lord's been, been really bringing me back, of course, to prayer because I'm asking the Lord. I'm like, God... This this is not normal. I I, I know I, I, it's it's like something that hits you and it doesn't go away. Like you said, even insomnia, these things, and then all of a sudden, like like I was saying earlier, you start getting short. You know, you start getting impatient. You start getting uh, you just, now even lust and things can start hitting you. You start feeling tempted. You know, sexually, you start feeling tempted in certain way, other ways that you were you weren't tempted up to that point and these these are the evidences by the way you've got a chip on your shoulder you've got something that is in your spirit man that, that you're carrying um that, that 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 now it's like it can almost become like a demonic thing where it's like attached itself to you and and i found that, that and probably the worst thing of all about these things i'm sharing with you guys that i've found is when um when you can't even admit it you, you, you can't confess it to anybody, you don't want anyone to know what you're going through because of pride, right? Because you want to appear to be Mr. Spiritual Man. You want to appear to be Mr. Righteous Man in the sense that you have no issues that you deal with. I'm not talking about being in willful sin here. I'm not talking about, you know, 
you know, you just, you know, you know, being on drugs or something or being a drunkard or something. I'm, I'm talking about like, you know, deep in your heart, you know, something that, that, that is, is, is a character flaw or something or something in your character now that is, that is, that is, that is, you know, got lodged in there. And so, but so what we don't want to do is, is cover that thing. You know what I mean? Don't, 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 don't allow yourself to appear uh, to be something you're not. You know, the best thing to do is just tell everybody. I can tell you guys, hey, man, I, I have my struggles. I have my moments. Uh, I'm still working through these issues. But, but the beautiful thing is, is that when we confess our sins to God, it says God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, to get this chip off our shoulder, to get this anger and wrath and get all these things that, you know, we've, we've allowed to, to get in, you know, to our life. You know, I, I like that passage of, um, with Jesus, you know, washing the disciples' feet. You know, in that first Peter, he, he, you know, he said, Lord, you'll never wash my feet. You know, he tried to resist the Lord from washing him. But of course, we know what Jesus said in John 13. He said, Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. You know, and, and, and so uh, eventually Peter lets Jesus wash his feet. <clears throat> you know, and we got, we got to let the Lord wash us, uh, right? That's what I see in that passage there. We, we pick up the gunk in the world. Uh, we pick up, you know, that, that, that those, the dirtiness on our feet, you know, spiritually. We get these chips on our shoulder and we, we got to just confess them to the Lord. Lord, uh, you know, I'm getting older, I'm getting weaker, I, the world's, the world's getting more satanic. The world's getting more, you know, uh, you know, homosexual approving. The world's getting more, you know, you know, drug using, uh, dr you know, laden with drugs. It seems like everybody's smoking something here. It seems like everybody, you know, is hailing Satan here. You know? and we, 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 we pick this stuff up on our feet. We know spiritually we need to get it washed like Peter got his feet washed. You know, and so we got to confess these things to the Lord and, and, and even to each other. You know, it says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another because the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. You know, and so um, so that's got to be the first step. Don't, don't to act like you got no chips on your shoulder. Don't act like you never deal with this because we all can have our moments. You, you know, just like I said with me, with my wife the other, the other day, before I, went, I wanted to go out, before I went out to that preach, I, I got to just ask my wife to pray for me. She knows me better than anybody else. She's my wife. And, and I don't want to act like I got no issues with, my, uh, with those who are closest to me because they know. Of course, God knows. <laughs> I mean, all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to we must give an account. And that's when it gets really scary. Oh, when we start, we start trying to hide things from God. Now you're like Adam and Eve. You're hiding in the garden. They're hiding in the garden from God. <laughs> Adam, Adam, where are you, Adam and Eve? Remember this? I mean, when um, after they had finally eaten of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of uh, good and evil, you know, uh, 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 Eve gives in to the serpent and she gives some to her husband, and now they know they're naked. <laughs> they're hiding from God out there in the in the in the in the in the in the vineyard. You know, God's like Adam. Adam, where are you? You know, Adam. You know, it's kind of like with Cain. You know, I thought about this passage. I, I use this passage all the time with Cain and Abel. You know, so. Cain, you know, his sacrifice was not accepted from the Lord. And, 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 and so it says that Cain became angry and his countenance fell. He got a chip on his shoulder, you know, Cain got it. He, he, he fell for the trap of the devil there, you know, and, and God showed up and said, Cain, why are you angry? Just the same thing that happened with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, why are you hiding from me? Don't you know that the eyes of the Lord are in every place keeping watch on the evil and on the good? There is no place to hide from me, <laughs> man. Look, it says in Psalms 139, if I ascend into heaven, Lord, that you are there. If I make my bed in hell, if I, if, I, if I go all the way down to the depths of the earth, there you are, God. You know? It says, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, your right hand will carry me, Right? Even the darkness is light to God, it says there. <laughs> Even in the darkest cave, man, God, it's, it's, it's light. He sees it. It's light to him. There's, look, we've got to get this concept. We've got to get this truth in our spirit because when we get these chips on our shoulders, when we get our feet dirty spiritually, we got to just say, God, you know what? I got it. I got it. There, there's something going on here. God, I, I, my countenance has fallen, you know, like Cain. I'm angry, God. I don't know what to do with it. Help me here, Lord. 
You know, I like that verse in Psalms, 30, uh, Psalms 4. David said, he said, um, the Lord said to him, he said, be angry and, and, and do not sin, though. He says, meditate on your, 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 in your heart on your bed and be still. You know, you know, God knows that there's going to be times we get angry. Sometimes, you know, it's a righteous indignation. It's a righteous anger. We're upset at an injustice. We're upset at, at, at something that ha that's happening. It seems like the wicked are getting away with murder. It seems like the evildoers, is, they never, you know, there's no pains in their death, David said in Psalm 73. Their, eye, their eyes bulge with abundance. Man, it seems like they're, 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 they're winning. It seems like they're, they're getting blessed by God. And God's on their side, it seems like. You know, David talked about this in, in Psalm 73. But, uh, but then it said this. It said that, that David, you know, that, that he went into the sanctuary of God. This is when things finally turned around for, for David in this, this, this situation where... Hey, guys. Sorry. Uh, there we go. Sorry about the interruption there. Uh, you know, David, so David's going through all this chastening. David's going through all this trials. You know, and, and he's watching the wicked. Seems like they're getting away with murder. Seems like they're getting, they never have any problems here. But uh, but it said that David, once once he finally went into the sanctuary of God, again, we get into that prayer closet. We get into that place where it's just us and God. And we're confessing it to God. We get around our brothers in Christ. We're confessing our, our, situ our, our problems to our brothers in Christ. We're working through difficult situations and disagreements. We're not, you know what I mean, um, taking a high seat and trying to lord over people our Christian brothers, these type of things, elevate ourselves above them. No, we're trying to come under. We're trying to esteem others better than ourselves. We're trying to do these things that the Bible says that are the keys to our success. You know, and, 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 and so David went into the sanctuary of God, it says in Psalm 73, and then he understood their end. He understood that there is an end coming for the wicked folks. It's going to be a disastrous end. So we don't need to worry about it, right? So we get these chips on our shoulder. We get these things that we're battling through um, uh, uh, in our life. So we gotta confess them. We gotta just, 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 just confess them to God, you know, cause he already knows. There's nothing, there's, there's, everything's laid bare in God's presence, right? Um, and, and we gotta confess them to our loved ones, people that we trust, and we know that they love us and they, they cover us in prayer. Now, that's gonna be the first step to, 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 to getting relief, amen. Hopefully you agree with that, cause it's biblical. Now. I wanted to just read you a couple of scriptures here um, that I've found um, because it says if we walk in the spirit, we won't gratify the lust of the flesh. Having a chip on our shoulder is, is walking in the flesh. Hopefully you guys understand that, right? Because when you're in the spirit, you know, it says the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, uh, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Against such, <clears throat> there is no law. You know, when you're, you're under grace, you're not under the law. See, the law works wrath. And, and a lot of times we think, um, the Pharisees miss this. You know, they, they, were, they, were t they tried to be teachers of the law. They, they, they miss the, the fact that the law brought these chips on your shoulder. The law puts a burden on you. Paul talked about this a lot in his teachings in Galatians, you know, and such. He said, look, the law... Uh, Moses said, uh, 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 Paul quoted this, that uh, uh, who, he who does the, uh, what's he said there? He who, he who something does the law. Um, Cursed is every man who doesn't do all the things that are written in the law, he says, and continues in it. Cursed is the man, but blessed is the man who does the law. But well, the problem with that is, uh, uh, Paul flushes this out, is that there's nobody can do the law perfectly. So what happens is, is that, these areas of our life, if we try to do, do, attain to righteousness by the law, are imperfections. The areas that we fall short, according to the perfection of the law, those things start to become magnified <laughs> in our walk if we try to attain to righteousness by the law. God, you know, starts. It's, it, Romans seven talks about this. You know, the law says, "Don't covet," and we recognize we might have a moment of covetousness. And now that law is stirring up that very desire to covet. So, so Paul says, what should I, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm a wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Who will deliver me from this fallen nature? But he says, what is the answer? Praise be to the Lord. 
Praise be to God who gives us the victory in Jesus. See, so that's why we're, we're always casting our burdens on the Lord. We're always casting our, our, our chips on our shoulders to the Lord. We're saying, Lord, I can't carry this thing. It's too heavy for me. I can't attain to perfection by the law. Give me your grace, right? <laughs> Just once again, we fall on our face at the foot of the cross, right? This is something we got to do continually. We got to learn to do this continually. This is, this, is, this, is, this is what it means to pray without ceasing. What are we praying about? without ceasing. We're praying, God, help me with these burdens. Help me with this, these imperfections that, 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 that I can't cleanse out of me on my own. I can't perfect on my own. Only you can perfect these things. Only you can wash my feet. Peter wasn't going to wash his own feet. Back to the, situ the, the account in, in John 13. It was the Lord who had to um, you know, wash his feet. The Lord had to do it for him. Right? Do you see that there? Because Jesus said, look, Peter, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. It's not, Peter, go wash your own feet. No, I'm going to wash your feet, Peter. I'm the, one, the greatest servant of all. I'm the one who is slave of all. I'm the one who is greatest among you, but I am among you who serves. And I give my life as a ransom for you to be an example. As we humble ourselves, let the Lord wash us. Let the Lord take our burdens as we're confessing, repenting, being sorry about it. God takes it and now he teaches us how to bear others' burdens, right? He teaches us how to come in when somebody else is struggling in an area that we might not be. And God says, go to that person and, and comfort them and help them and teach them and, 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 and give mercy to them it, because, because I've given you that ability now to do so because I've had mercy on you. I've taught you. I've helped you. <laughs> That's how it works. But if we don't ever let the Lord do it, if we act like we got it all together, if we act like we don't have no issues... Like Cain, you know, Cain didn't face his problems. Back to the account of Cain in Genesis 4, when God said, Cain, you're disgruntled, you're angry. You know, he's like, remember Martha and Mary? And Jesus said, Mary, Martha, you're worried and troubled about many things, you know? And, 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 and but Mary chose this better part, the, the good part that will not be taken from her, you know? Martha, man, when are you going to learn that these burdens are going to weigh you down, these chips on your shoulder, man? Now you're not a cheerful giver no more. God loves a cheerful giver, 1 Corinthians 9, right? So, so this, is, this, is where it gets, this is where it gets problematic. You know, for, it got problematic for Martha because Martha came to the Lord thinking that the Lord was going to side with her. Martha was under the law. Come on, Jesus. This is right for Mary to help me here in the kitchen. We got work to do. He says with the law, the law is all about work. It's all about rigor. It's all about the, 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 the power of man, the power of the flesh. Not about the power of God. And Jesus called her out on it. Look, Martha, this thing that you're doing, it's becoming a burden to you. No longer is it, is it a labor of love. No longer is it something that you're doing you know, cheerfully here. So what's the point? You might as well be like Mary here and just be still. <laughs> and know that he is God. Just quiet and calm yourself at the feet of Jesus man, and get a change in your inner man so that you can go back to the kitchen. Because you know, there is a time to work in the kitchen. There is a time to go labor in the field. I'm here, I'm here at work right now. I just pulled up to the job site. But what good is it? You know, if I go to this job site angry and, 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 and uh, you know, mad at the world, you know, because, you know, back to what happened to Cain, you know, so Cain had this, this, this chip on his shoulder and, you know, he wasn't getting his uh, uh, sacrifices acceptable to, to the Lord. And the Lord called him out, you know, because the Lord knows the hearts of men, you know what I mean? So, 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 so Cain, you know, was angry and his countess fell, but, but he didn't deal with it. This is so sad. You know, when we read these, these accounts in the word um, of when people didn't deal with it, you know, it ended up causing Cain to Rise up against Abel and kill him, guys. Guys, this is what happens. You know, it says those who are born of the flesh then persecute those who are born of the spirit. Even so, it is now. Look, we've got to deal with these chips on our shoulder. We have to. Because if we don't, we're going to be just like Cain. We're going to be rising up against our brothers in Christ. We're going to be rising up against our, 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 our precious brothers in Christ and trying to kill them. You know, it says, if we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. It says, let us not become conceited, envying one another, provoking one another. Galatians 5 tells us there. You know, so, um, but if we walk in the Spirit, right, if we, if, if we learn how to, you know, get, get back in the Spirit, get out from under the law, get that weight of the law off of us, get back in the Spirit, you know, what ends up happening is, is that now we got this 
easy yoke, this light burden of the Lord. We get back to that broad place where there's no restraint. Psalms 18 says he's leading you beside still waters. He's restoring your soul. Don't you guys love this, man? You know, when, you, when you've had a chip on your shoulder, you've had a weight you've been carrying and you finally repent of it, you finally confess it, you finally come back to, to your first love and now God, oh, he, he brings you back out into that oasis. He brings you back out into the, to the meadows. <laughs> you know, the fields of grace, man. You're like, oh, I missed this, man. This is great, man. I'm finally sleeping like a baby again. I am finally got rest. I finally got joy. I finally, <laughs> oh, I miss this place, man. I miss this. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you didn't leave me in that dry wind of the desolate heights. Thank you didn't leave me in that, in that desert, man, of the devil there, which was, which was my, my bad attitude. <laughs> Amen. Oh, wisdom is a bubbling brook here, man. Oh, and now you can still be in the desert. You can still be in a trial. Oh, but inside, man. Oh, you've got a feast of the Lord, man. Oh, outside there's troubles, you know, in your life. But inside, man, oh. You got God ministering to you. You got God blessing your spirit. You know, it don't matter what you're doing now or what's happening in your, in your life on the, in, the, in the outside. It becomes a light affliction, which is but for a moment, which is working for you a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. So now you're willing to go through whatever trials, man, with your head high, with a good attitude, because you know that God, you know, for the joy set before the Lord, he endured that cross, right? Now your perspective has changed. And, 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 and God is, is, is giving you strength and power to go through your, sometimes, you know, when we, excuse me, when we repent of these spiritual issues I'm talking about today, the, the trial doesn't necessarily end right away. I want to mention this at this time, because I think sometimes we think in our flesh, again, you, you know, our fleshly mind, our carnal mind, hey, God, you know, I, I, I dealt with my, my chips on my shoulder. I dealt with my, my anger. I dealt with my wrathfulness. Now, now take this, this problem away from me. You know, you can get this attitude like, like, come on, God, chop, chop, take care of it. Now, I mean, God, God might sometimes, you know, take your, your problems away in the natural. But, but, but a lot of times I've found he doesn't right away. But what does he do? He, he changes your inner man. He changes the disposition of your heart so that you can go through the trial with a different attitude. And, 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 and you're waiting on the Lord. You're being patient uh, with God. And, and you know how God is. He, he always eventually takes care of that problem that you're dealing with in the natural, which, which it's a process, right? And the first step is getting our heart right. Because, pff, shoot, if your heart's not right and you're carrying these chips on your shoulder, God, he could take away the trial in the natural, but you still got a chip on your shoulder. So even when things are good, even when things seem to go back to normal or whatever in your life, let's just say you lost your job. You know, you lost your job. Well, God gives you a new job, let's just say. But if you got a chip on your shoulder, but now you carry that into your new job. Look, you, you could be promoted at your job. You could be get a bonus at your job. You could get an incredible increase at your job. But if you got a chip on your shoulder, I mean, what's the point, man? What's the point of, of, of getting the money, man? You know what I mean? Now, now you can't even enjoy it. You can't. You, you, does anybody know what I'm talking about here? I know. I know this because I've experienced it myself over and over again. I don't want this. So just a couple more verses here on this. Uh, I'm going to give you because I, I do got to go to work here. Um, there's so much in the scripture, man, uh, on this. I thought about, man, you know, you know, this, this concept that I'm talking about today ties into the other word, um, that I was sharing about peace. Um, you, you know, they're like interconnected. You know, when you have a chip on your shoulder, you lack peace. You really do. You know, when you got peace in your spirit, when, 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 you know, when you're in perfect peace because your mind is stayed upon the Lord, you got no chips on your shoulder. You're not worried about tomorrow. You're not worried about a situation. It doesn't bother you. You, you know, you're, you've, you've committed to the Lord. It's in His control. It's in His hands. You're, you're, just, you're, just, you're just completely at rest in, in the Spirit. You know what I mean? You know, you know, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God, right? You're right? Jesus said that in the Beatitudes. I thought about this. You know what I mean? When, when, you're, when you're a son of peace, when you're in perfect peace, as you're supposed to be in the Lord, um, you're a peacemaker, you know, just like I said earlier, you know, your brother's got something against you, you go make peace with your brother. You, you do not make it worse. You don't want it to be worse. You don't want it to remain that wedge. You, 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 you know what I mean? You don't, you don't want to be the, the guy to try to always try to be a corrector in these things. You know, you want to be a connector. Uh, you know, I've used that, that, that phrase in the past, but 
You know, Jesus didn't say, blessed are the troublemakers. They'll be called sons of God, right? He said, blessed are the peacemakers. You see, when you're, when you're walking in peace, like I'm saying right now, those chips, they just, they, just, they just come off of you. But when you allow those weights, those chips, those, the weight of the law, trying to be perfect by the law, all those things I mentioned in this teaching, they start to govern you and, and r- rule over your heart. Oh, now you are a troublemaker. You're the guy that seems to be causing trouble. And I've been there. And I don't want to go there anymore. I don't want you either to stay in that place if you're there now. Just just get rid of it. Cast it off of you. Any way you can, fight against it because it will rob you, not just of your peace. It'll affect you physically. It, it'll affect your body. It, 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 it'll, it'll cause you to have health problems, folks. This is where it gets scary, folks. Now, now you have no strength be, in you anymore to even... It seems like you're just... You're just you, like, like somebody was saying on here, you can end up, you know, sleepless nights. You can end up, you know... It seems like you're, 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 you're weaker. Your immune system's weaker. Man, you're, you're just... So many issues that can, they can, they can happen. Just like Cain. His countenance fell. He was angry and hateful and murdered Abel. You know what I mean? But it affects us physically. Um, so I just got a couple more verses on this. You know, uh, what, what, what it's like when, um, when you're walking in the Spirit. And, 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 and now you have this peace, this joy. Um, this is a good one here. Ecclesiastes 9. Verse 7, Solomon said, he said, he said, go eat your bread with joy and drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has already accepted your works. Let your garments always be white and your head lack no oil. You know, when, when you um, have resolved in your heart not to, not to carry these burdens and have these chips on your shoulder, um, you, you, you're able to do what Solomon's saying here. You, you, you know, you got your bread, you know, that God's given you got, it might be just be a morsel, it might just be something small. You know, you might not have, you, you know, a fridge full of food, um, like how I do right now. You, you might just be, uh, uh, who knows what situation you're in, but whatever bread you have, whatever morsel you have, you're eating it with joy. Solomon's saying, you're drinking that wine. It might just be, you know, a glass of water that you got from a tap. You know, at some food shelter here, but you're drinking that glass of water. You're praising God for it because you could be in a drought where there is no water. You could be in a you could be in, you could be in like the Revelation times when God turned all the water into blood. <laughs> you never thought about this? What it's going to be like for these people, man, who have no clean water? It says that God turned all the springs of water into blood, and now God, you know, an angel spoke and said that because they have shed the blood of prophets and saints, it says now God has given them blood to drink. Could you imagine not having any water to drink? I mean. So, so we get this attitude that, wow, thank you, God, for this clean glass of clear, you know, water here. You know, it might not even be the best water, but it's better than a glass of blood, isn't it? You know what I mean? Drink your wine with a merry heart. You know, that's why for me, I, 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 I want to have a merry heart above anything else. I want to have a cheerful countenance above ever, anything else. That's why I love people like Kevin. You know, being around people like Kevin who have the joy of the Lord as their strength. People like my wife who's always looking at the bright side of things and always smiling and always rejoicing in anything she can. She's, hey, look at this little morsel here. Let's magnify this. Thank God for this. You know, so precious here. You know, it could be something so stupid and so little, you know, but it's precious because the scripture says that um, a present is precious in the eyes of of its beholder. Do, 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 do you make a big deal about every little thing that God does for you? If, if you don't, then, then start today. I mean, because drink your wine with a merry heart. You know, have that merry heart. Stir up that gift that is in you. I, again, I want to encourage you today. This is not a message to weigh you down and put another chip on your shoulder. No, this is a message to lift you up. I want you to be lifted up. I want you to see these blessings that you get a perspective that, that changes, you know, that, that can be changed. Something that is, that is like work, you know, again, you know, I, I, I love work now. I used to hate my job. I used to hate having to go and deal with customers and difficultness. And, and like I said earlier in this message, you know, a day where you're driving everywhere and it seems like, you know, nobody's got this stupid, you know, $30 piece of vinyl. And I'm like, what's the problem here? Oh, what's the problem here? You, know, you get mad, you can get a chip on your shoulder. Thinking like, man, I mean, they gave me this job to do and I'm losing money. But you know what? Who cares, man? Who cares? Look, I could be dead and in hell. I could be, I could be, you know, I could be in some terrible situation. Who cares about, you know, having to take a loss here and there? 
for 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 God. You know, have a merry heart, man. Change your perspective um, about your situation. Because it says here, Solomon says here in, in Ecclesiastes um, 9, verse 7, that God has already accepted your works. You see, that's one thing I love about, about the way of the Spirit, you know. When you're in the Spirit, you get a perspective that is beyond your current situation. That's what he's talking about here. God's vantage point is, is in the vantage point of eternity. He's sovereign. So, so he sees the end from the beginning. He's already accepted your works, man. Just walk in whatever it is that God has given you to walk in. Whether it be, you know, a time to lose, a time to gain, a time to time of war, a time of peace. Get in step with God. And if, if something is difficult, if it's a time of trial in your life, you're saying, okay, God has appointed this as well as the other. I'm just thankful that I get to experience any of it. <laughs> Shall we not only accept good from the Lord and not also adversity? You know what I'm saying, guys? Because when you have that kind of attitude, now oh, now, now you're walking and talking with God, even through the difficult situation. You're like Job, who's struck with boils, who's going through a terrible trial. We read about, right? But Job is talking to the Lord about it. He's pouring out his complaint to God. He's communing with God. And the word of God is coming out of Job. And folks, nothing's wor nothing is worse than when we're not in that place I'm talking about right now. And, and it's like we're just we're just silent. We or the things we say we we can't draw we, can't, the word of God can't get drawn out of us because our heart's not right. What's getting drawn out of us? What's coming out of us is this this angry, hateful, wrathful you know guy that is embittered, you know, and 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 and, and you know the devil's what's coming out of us is what's coming out of us, folks. We don't want that, do we? Instead, we want to have this attitude: God has already accepted our works. God's already worked it out. All things work together for good that those that love God are called according to his good purpose. So who cares what I got to go through here anyways? Because I'm the Lord's and he's on my side. I don't have to fear any of it. What the devil's, you know, mocking me. and That's what he does. The devil comes when we're weak. He comes when trials come and he tries to, you know, lie to us. Oh, God has forsaken you. God's abandoning you. Folks, don't be surprised, by the way, if this happens to you, if you go through a trial and even people who are quote unquote close to you, Brothers in Christ, sisters in Christ that are close to you, come and start mocking you. Aha! Adam's getting his, finally. Finally. Oh, Adam sinned and God has abandoned him. Look, you, look, even people who are close to you, Job's friends were close to him and they got it wrong. So you don't listen to those voices. You don't entertain those voices. You pray for your enemies. You love your enemies. You just say, God, forgive you, friends, because you got it. You're dead wrong here. You, are, you, are, you could not be further from the truth what you're saying here. No, this is just an experience for me to, to, to go through here, whatever it is. Even if God is disciplining me, you know, God loves me because he disciplines me. That's what the Bible says. And then I'm going to become stronger as I learn these lessons, it says. It says that the no discipline is joyful for the present, but afterwards it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. You know, the devil comes and tries to make it like you're not going to learn those lessons. It's not going to yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness. That's what the, and, and, and that, that voice can come through these people in your life. You got to block that out and say, you know what? I'm listening to the voice of the Lord, which is powerful. I'm listening to the voice of what these scriptures says, which is true. God's got a plan. He's accepted my works. I'm going to have a merry heart here. Amen. Isn't that great, man, when you're in that place? Isn't that the best place to be in, by the way? He says uh, here, let your garments always be white and let your head lack no oil. You know, so 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 when everybody wants to, you know, wallow in their 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 whatever, you know what I mean? You're saying, no, 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 I'm gonna let my head lag no oil. I'm gonna do everything heartily as to the Lord here. I'm gonna have a merry heart, not gonna have a chip on my shoulder, no matter what I'm going through here. Oh, I'm gonna bless God. He says here, live joyfully with the wife of your youth, whom you love all the days of your vain life. <laughs> Such a vain life, isn't it? What's the point here? You know, we do all these things, we we you know, we're, we're there, all things are full of labor. That's why I love Ecclesiastes because the whole book is like, it's like, it's like a whole synopsis of all the things that Solomon experienced and all his glory and all his accomplishments. You know, God poured out not just uh, financial and physical blessings of Solomon. God gave Solomon wisdom more than anybody else at that time. But in all of that, he describes the whole thing to us. This is one of the, the keynotes, by the way. Uh, of Ecclesiastes. You know what I mean? When you read Ecclesiastes, there's certain points in the book where Solomon, you know, gives you kind of the, the point, you know, of, of what's the point here? What's the, what's, what, what, what should we do in light of all this vanity of vanities? In light of all this, this, this pointlessness 
of our life here. All the labor, all things are full of labor. The sun rises from one end to the, the out of the east, it goes to the west, it returns and then again down. The waters come down to the river and flow into the sea, and they go back up to the clouds and return. It's just all full of labor here. Man cannot express it, he says. What's the point? What is the point, man? Grasping for the wind, yes. You know, and, and but the point is this. Live joyfully with the wife of your youth, man, in your vain life. You know, embrace your wife. Embrace, again, take those little things, man, the littlest things that you can and make a big deal out of them. You know, and have your head lack no oil and have this merry heart. Have this joyful countenance. Smile, man. Have a Coke and a smile, man. B just bless the Lord at all times. Just let his praise be continually in your mouth, man. Even when you don't feel like doing it. Even like even when you gotta you, even when you gotta wait, you got a problem, you got a situation you're going through. You know, I'm telling you that that is when you're gonna get somewhere. That's when we're gonna break through. That's when our healing is gonna come. We're gonna find ourselves able to help people in a greater way. We're gonna have strength. We're gonna have a double portion from God to be able to go out there and give to the poor and help. Like it says in Isaiah 58. When we do these, these things that God requires, the fast of the Lord, the Sabbath day of the Lord, now your healing arises speedily. Your light dawns in the darkness. Righteousness goes before you. <laughs> this, I live for this, man. I live for this. There's nothing like this. You know? But it all starts with this attitude of having a merry heart, getting these chips off our shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, like I'm saying today, and this peace of God comes in this rest of God in the midst of a storm. Jesus was sleeping underneath in the boat when the storm was going on. <laughs> you know I mean? Here comes the disciples trying to wake Jesus up. Jesus, Jesus, the boat is sinking. <laughs> Get up, don't you care that we're perishing? Jesus awakes, what, what are you worried about here? What's the problem here, man? Don't you know who I am? I'm the one who calms the seas, man, where's your faith? <laughs> you know, I thought to myself one time when I read this account, but I just quoted you, you know, um, man, if the, the disciples really knew, you know, if they really understood who Jesus was, I mean, all they had to do was go and just, 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 just cuddle up next to Jesus down underneath the boat. You know what I mean? Just kind of, kind of cuddle up next to him and hold on to him. <laughs> just hold on to Jesus because the boat's going down, man. God will give you lungs and gills to breathe under the water because it's Jesus, man. <laughs> you got on your Jesus suit. I mean, Jesus ain't going to let you drown. Are you kidding me? It's Jesus. It's the guy who opens the eyes of the blind. It's the guy that you're seeing do these things that no man ever spoke like this. Come on, guys. Are you a Christian or not, man? You got the spirit or not? Just sit next to Jesus, man, and go through it. You don't need to worry about the storms. He's asleep on a pillow, man. Just go to bed with him, man. Fall asleep with him. You'll awaken the next the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And the angels will carry that boat all the way across there. <laughs> oh, I just love, I love being free from, 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 from fear. I love being free from all these weights, these gills, these chips that can get on our shoulders. Oh, it almost makes you want to laugh. You, know? <laughs> you become like, uh, you know, Hannah that said, I, I smile at my enemies. I laugh at my enemies. In Proverbs 31, the, the woman of God says she laughs at the days to come. Ah, ha, I laugh at these, these lying spirits, these, these, these lying demons, man, who try to make us, you know what I mean, fear, try to make us way down. You know, it's a beautiful place to be, isn't it? Oh, it's the, it's the place I want to stay. You know, I don't ever want to leave this place. Unfortunately, sometimes I do, and I just come back to the Lord. God, I blew it. I let it get to me again. Oh, I looked at the, the boisterous waters, you know. I was walking on water. I was walking on water. You're like Peter, man. You're floating on the water, man. And all of a sudden, man, oh, you start looking at the waves. You start looking at everyone else with their chips on their shoulder. Oh, this brother in Christ got a chip on his shoulder. What's wrong with him? You know, <laughs> yeah. look, look, that's not, that's not going to fix the problem. You know, just do the, you know, Jesus said, just focus on getting the beam out of your own eye. And when you're able to do that, then you'll be able to help that brother. Maybe that's got a chip on his shoulder. And, and remove the speck out of his eye, but but don't but don't get too focused on that 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 beam that uh, uh, chip that is in his eye, that 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 chip that is on his shoulder, because now all of a sudden you can start sinking, right? Like Peter did when he was walking on the water. You know what I mean? So just stay in that place, stay in that place that I'm talking about. Having a merry heart, having a cheerful countenance. It's a continual feast. The proverb says it continues with you all the days of your vain life. 
It's the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. This is the commandment of the Lord. I know it is, man. Because it's just, it's just, it's just, it's needed more than anything else in this time, especially. So, amen. That's my message for today. I'm going to get going here to work. Amen. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Amen. Whatever God's given you today, do it with all your heart. As to the Lord, not to men. Love you guys. God.